forever. <laughs> Dog. Welcome to another episode of Best Show Bests, the greatest hits of the best show with me, your host, Tom Sharpling. If you like what you hear, make sure you join us every Tuesday night on Twitch at 6 p.m. Pacific for a brand new episode of the best show featuring callers, celebrity guests, live music, and plenty of surprises. Enjoy! Because this, this is the one that I had mentioned earlier in the show that, I mean, the, the book press schedule has been so incredibly overwhelming that I actually agreed to do an interview during the show, which I thought could kind of be fun, especially considering the, who it is. It's, uh, Dave Ewell, uh, his podcast crushing it. I thought, you know, people obviously know Dave's podcast. Uh, he's, he's kind of carved out his own place in the, in the, in the podcast world. And man, I mean, I try to think of the first time I heard of, uh, Dave did, uh, he was the creator and host of, of, uh, that shout network show, the very, very controversial show, uh, tough now where they got all these kind of like super macho alpha males who are ambushed, like literally on their way to tough guy challenges and held in underground, like they were restrained, held in underground bunkers where they got all this like brutal treatment until they admitted they weren't that tough. And it was what a spectacle that show was. Um, Pat, do we have Dave on the line? Yes, you do. Okay. Dave, uh, I want to welcome to the show, Dave Yule. Hey buddy. Uh, hey, look, full honesty. Um, when your publicist, uh, Sharon, floated the idea of me interviewing you on your show, I have to say I, I was a little offended considering the massive disparity in the size of our audiences and, and probably our junk. But, uh, but then I thought, you know, this could be a cool idea, pretty cool, you know, kind of like the movie inside a movie aspect in Reservoir Dogs, you know? Um, the movie inside the movie aspect no well then that's i think you might be referring to the player not reservoir dogs oh my god oh, oh. this cat's already copping an attitude no <laughs> listen cr crack any of the t-man's flicks it, it don't sound like you do um yeah kobayashi he was making a porno film that whole time what you're, you're i'm very confused by you uh yeah, no, Kobayashi. He was making a porno the whole the whole movie in Reservoir Dogs. Kobayashi. Yeah. Who? Can't believe this guy already. All right. Well, look. Let's uh, let's go to the interview. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Well, first off, I like to do a disinterested island disc playlist uh, for each of the guests we have on Crushing It. So uh, I'm going to put you on the spot. Give me your uh, give me your top ten. My top. That is a real tricky thing to do. A top ten desert island discs. Man, that is a. That's going to take no, a no, lot no, of time. No, no. no, your top ten disinterested island discs. Um. My wait, what what is that? Well, uh, basically, it, it's it's I don't know t ten songs that made no impression on you, and you could go the rest of your life with ever hearing again. But what what would what would be the point in that? Well, no one else is doing that kind of list. Well, okay. Come on, and that's shoot, fair. Bitch. Wait, what did he just say? I said, shoot, bitch. Okay. All right, Dave. Man, geez, that's a real challenge, though. D uh, top 10 disinterested island discs. Yeah. Man, uh, off the top of my head, for starters, No One Is to Blame by Howard Jones, uh, Walking on the Sun by Smash Mouth. 
uh, uh, Morning Dance by Spyro Gyra. Um, she was hot by the Rolling Stones, uh, Lumineers, Ho Hey, uh, anything from Hamilton, Jumper from Third Eye Blind, uh, Wonderful Tonight by Eric Clapton, Aeroplane by Red Hot Chili Peppers, and uh, Fly Away by Lenny Kravitz. Those are great. You had me with uh, she, she Was Hot. That's, that's, a, that's one of the worst of all time. Yeah, that was... Uh, yeah, that, that I feel like that one kind of got away from them a little bit. Great video, though. Yeah, they really, they really, the Stones really understood what made a great music video. And I think that's one of the things that makes them one of the all-time great bands is they understood that a video could just be the Rolling Stones sitting on a brownstone porch, and that's it. It's true. It's like, like I always say, they didn't get good till 83. Till, uh, yeah, like, I mean, undercover work. is almost there, but like dirty work really is, is the first one where you're like, yeah, they, they know who they are now. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's interesting. I don't really even listen to music anymore. You know, I, I, uh, I pretty much only listen to my own brand of, uh, of Dave Yule's power mixes. Power mixes. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, they're available on my website. It, it, it's a great new inspiring sound experience that will really elevate the game of whoever listens to it. And, and, and buddy, I've trademarked that last sentence. And if I hear you've said it, chicklets. Wait, well, if you hear me say it, what did you just say? Chicklets. That means your teeth are no longer in your mouth, like the popular post-church chewing gum. Chicklet. I didn't know chicklets were a post-church chewing gum. Oh yeah that that was our that was our big treat after after church. We go to church for seven hours every Sunday, and then our, our dad would give us some uh, give us a chicklet each. One chicklet each. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes half a half a chicklet. Yeah, well, would that depend on if you weren't as good in church or something? Yes, yeah, depending if we if, if we had to had, had to uh, had to pee or not, you know. But by that point, if it's half a chiclet, it's a chiclet lit. Yeah, chiclets. Well, look, don't worry, I'm not going to steal your power phrase or whatever it was. All right, uh, all right. All right. Well, uh, so, uh, Tom wrote a book, uh, you know, by, by now I've, I've written four bestsellers myself. Uh, but I remember when I wrote my first one tougher than God, I was a little nervous about exposing so much of myself. Uh, I mean, my, my inner world, not, not my outer one. <laughs> Let's be honest, but everyone and their mother had seen my six pack and power bulge by the time I did that swimsuit spread in Maxim sister mag Maxine back in 2017. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that there was um, a, a, a sister publication to Maxim. Oh, yeah. Huge in France. Maxine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Check it out sometime. I'd do it. Uh, so when I write my bestsellers, I, I go into this mode. Basically, I, I drink a few of my Dave Yale's uh, Alpha Blast Energy Shakes. I put on the power mixes and I just pound the shit out of that keyboard. And I'll tell you, I usually have to have to replace my keyboard twice during a book because I wail on them with such force. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So, so tell me your process. How's it work for you? For, for writing, I just generally, um, pick a pick a, 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 a an aspect of my life that I want to write about or discuss and really try to <sighs> I mean <sighs> I just kind of work it through things and I, I think about whether I talked about it on the best show or not and <sighs> that gives me kind of like oh well I've discussed what what are you <sighs> Can I can I ask what's going on over there? Excuse me. Can I can I ask what's going on, Dave? I'm just doing I'm just doing some reps. 
Yeah, I'm so busy. I, I got to grab sets whenever I can. 2,999. 3,000. 3,000. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 I started like 10 minutes ago. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so hey. as I was saying, what's that? So, um, so I heard you mention the best show. Uh, what was the best show the band played when you, when you were with them? Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm truly confused right now. What was the best show the band played when you were in the band? The best show the band played? What, what band? Wait, hang on here. What? What's your name? My name is Tom Sharpling. Who? Tom Sharpling. That's the that's my name. You asked my name. I told you my name. It's we've oh. been you. You've been interviewing me for a while now. Oh my god! See, I thought I was talking to Tom Demartini, the original bassist in Puddle of Mud, about his new book, Sick Tales from Inside the Puddle. Oh. My, I tell you, my assistant needs uh, needs some work. That's for sure. Oh. No, I'm not the former bass player from Puddle of Mud. Dude, no need to. No, you need to uh, unwad your onesie, okay? You're more sensitive than my uncle Doug. Oh. I'm more sensitive than your uncle Doug. Yeah, my uncle Doug replaced Lou Reed in this band called the Velvet Underground, and it totally did his head in big time. He he even wrote my other uncle Billy into playing drums, and it did his his head in too. I'll tell you, I'm the only kick ass member of this whole damn fam. Wait, your uncle is Doug Yule? Yes, yeah. From the Velvet Underground. Yes, yeah. Wow. That's that's legit. Kind of, I mean, it's, it's not puddle of mud, but it's, I guess it, it's, it, it's still cool. You know, uh, Hey, but look, bro, you know, I, I I'm swamped here. I, I have 10 more interviews to do tonight, uh, including, uh, Shaglin to dope, uh, Jake Paul, Jake Paul's little brother, Paul, Paul, uh, Frederick Durst, Scott Disick, uh, Dick Scott uh, and Shemaine Nugent. So it, it, it's no sweat off my sack if you want to bail. Okay. If I want to bail you, this has been a thing where you misunderstood who I was the whole time. I don't know what you're, you're putting it on me as if I, they, they, this is a, is a real bummer. Look, well now, now I feel kind of bad and, and look, I, I've been trying to be a better person after being canceled for the third time this year. And, and I'll be honest, I, I had no idea you couldn't say anymore. You probably had yeah, to, I had, I had to, I had, I had to yeah. leave that. I know it. I, okay. So, so I apologize. I know I blamed it on my assistant, but it's ultimately I, the buck stops here. Okay. So, so, so tell me about this book. What's it called? Well, the book is called, well, thank you. The book is called It Never Ends, and it's a, a memoir, subtitled A Memoir with Nice Memories, and it's really the story of my life and uh, growing up in New Jersey and kind of figuring things out and trying to get a career going and dealing with some problems and all of it. It's a pretty... See asleep. Did he hang up? Dave? Oh, he hung up. So he fell asleep and then hung up. Great. Great. Well, that's what we're going to do. I don't know. We got any more calls, Pat? Yes, line five. 
Okay, let's do it. Best show, hi. Hello, best show. Oh. Man, I don't know. How did he call up? Dave? Dave, wake up. He's gone. Wow. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. That's how it goes, I guess. The Best Show is produced in partnership with the Forever Dog Podcast Network. The show is hosted by Tom Sharpling and features John Worcester, Michael Lisk, Jason Gore, and Pat Byrne. The show is produced and written by Jason Gore, Pat Byrne, Michael Lisk, Brett Davis, John Worcester, and Tom Sharpling. The Best Show is executive produced by Tom Sharpling, Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, and Alex Ramsey. Co-executive produced by Jason Gore and Pat Burns, segment producer Michael Lisk. The show is engineered and mastered by Andrew Gleason and Wesley Knapp. Graphic design, video editing, and social media by Brett Davis. Website and technical support by Martine Sellis. And the show is recorded at Forever Dog Studios in Los Angeles. Support The Best Show on Patreon over at patreon.com slash thebestshow. And follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Best Show for Life. That's Best Show number four, Life. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.